Today we're gonna code lots with Mr. Kim Phil Potts and oh how amazing you'll be. Good morning. How's everyone doing? A few people on the on the line already. Chicken wing. How you doing? Lewis, a bit of Lachlan in there. Bionix Jr. MJ Freelancing. Welcome everyone. Yeah, my um my coronavirus hair is uh, is getting out of control. So uh, it's it's going full afro. Actually, it's kind of going more like Kramer. Oh, this background. This background is um, is things that are important to me, like cycling and monkeys. <laughs> All right. So um, let's uh, let's keep keep going. Uh, hi. How's everyone? Beautiful. All right, what are we going to do? We're going to um, we're going to continue pizza time, doing a little bit of uh, bit of oops, excuse me, a little bit of pizza action. So um, project. Hmm, I'm not sure why that's not working. What we're doing is we're having a look at this pizza. Um, in fact, let me swap over here. We're doing this pizza UI. So we've um, we've done a couple of streams on this. Um, got some of the key elements working out of here. Um, today, I want to tackle sort of uh, just some finishing touches and, and mostly this this ruler that we have going across here, which is which is kind of interesting, um, which is sort of allowing us to select sizes. So um, that's what we'll have a look at. Uh, and I should mention this design is, is a pizza shop interaction by Bidyat Kumar Bira. So uh, that's the, the UI that we're working on. So let's have a look at some, some code. Let's just dive straight in. Um, let, me, let me go ahead and run it. Let's see where we're at. Oh, there was the, the .NET community stand up. I missed that one. All right, here's our uh, here's our UI. 
so we've got the, the basic elements in there. I think I haven't done the styling for the fonts actually. So um, that could probably look a little bit better. Um, but what we have is we've got our, our pizza, we go and we tap on it and we basically navigate through a few different states in here. Okay, so that's, uh, that's nice. We've got ourselves a nice little button down here that if we tap on that button, we sort of uh, go through our, our quantities in here. And if we hit the minus button, we go, if I could tap correctly, we go back through those as well. So that's a nice little, nice little control. I like that one. All right. So, um, yeah, on the counter. Yeah. So that's a, it's an, it's a nice little animation. Actually, it's, it, it was pretty easy to do. So it was in this, uh, it was called the Ferris label because Lachlan said that a, a, a vertical, uh, carousel is called a Ferris wheel. So, um, it's actually just a couple of labels. And then when we change the state, we just do a little bit of animation. We basically just come in and, uh, we, we change the translation Y of one out and then another one in. So very cool. Hey, there's a, uh, Today we're gonna code lots with Mr. Kim there's a follow. Who was that? Real code Jed. <laughs> nice. Let me uh let me just make a note here. Today we're gonna code lots with Mr. Kim Phil Oh, and another follow. How amazing you'll be. Who was that? Got milk. No, got got Mike. I'm not sure if that's a, a zero or not. So, uh, hi, real code, real code, Jed, and um, got Mike. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. So, um, if you if you're new here, I'm not sure if you're new here, but uh, we're just sort of doing some some UI work uh, in Xamarin Forms. So, uh, just playing around with uh, with some animations and uh, moving things around the screen. All right, cool. Um, so we've probably got a few things that we want to do today. I should, um, I should just write myself a little bit of a list, I think. So uh, the first thing we need is we need a a, um, a pizza ruler. Okay, so our pizza ruler is uh, if we go and have a look at the at the design. Okay, so we've got this pizza ruler over here um, with a cool little thumb that uh, allows you to change the, the size of the pizza. Um, we should work on the, oh, there's also the pizza ruler thumb. You know, so the little, uh, well, let's just leave that as pizza ruler. What else we got? We've got, um, yeah, so, um, Adarazi, um, in the original UI animation, the transition of pizza sizes, small, medium, large happens on the click, uh, of the add card button and not on the pizza. Yeah, that's right. So at the moment we, we didn't have a way of doing it. So we just click on the pizza and it navigates through the States, but you're absolutely right. Um, Let's uh, let's put something in for that. What do we want? Um, uh, so with the pizza ruler, we'll change size based on the thumb change. All right. So yep, absolutely right. That's true. Uh, Lachlan says. Um, <laughs> the pizza rule is a bindable stack layout of box views. No, <laughs> that would be crazy. I think we're going to be, end up with some skier sharp on this. Uh, basically that's, uh, that's my guess. That's my go-to for when, when I've got something which, uh, there's just no control for in Xamarin forms, but yeah, I technically you could probably do it with a bindable with a, with a 
stack ladder box use, but I think it'd be really inefficient. Uh, what else do we need to do? We need to um, have our, create our, our place order, all right? Because the other thing as well is when we hit add to cart, that's when we're taking the pizza and we're throwing it down into the bottom section. Um, but actually that happens when the quantity changes. And um, so uh, change Yeah, it could be a slider. Um, okay, let me have a look at this. So when we add to the cart, We want to animate the pizza when, when the quantity changes. All right. All right. That's a few things to get us started. Hi, uh, Okiki Rama, Okiki Rami, Rumi. Welcome. All right. Um, where should we start? Should we do the pizza ruler? What do you think? Okie for short. <laughs> so why does, um, why does apply text return a void instead of a task? Um, Well, one reason why is because on text change isn't an async method. So we're not awaiting it. I suppose it could. Okay, you're at Monkey Fest this year. Beautiful. Yeah, I, it, it's true what Lachlan says. I am a bad person. I'm a rubbish coder who um, completely ignores most good practice but that's because i do ui stuff ui stuff's like smoke and mirrors but uh if you join me on wednesday nights i'm trying to build a real app so uh i'll probably use better practices there or maybe not all right um oh actually here's here's something uh that i fixed so if you remember um what we were doing is every time I do a hot reload, um, it was mucking up the location of the pizza, okay? And it would reset, right? But but now, and what it was doing was, it was hot reloading, not to its initial state, but it was actually putting the, the, the pizza uh, kind, of, kind of up in this corner here, right? And all the animations had failed. Um, and the reason for that, I, I dug into that and I thought, well, that's not right. And the reason for it is that my animation state engine, which I, I stole from somebody else, quite rightly, uh, when it has, doo -doo -doo, let me have a look here. When it holds on to a visual element, Okay, so when it sets up the, the animation or sets up the, the state for an element, it doesn't hold a, a strong reference to it, right? So it holds a weak reference. So uh, what that means is it means that uh, when, like the, the, the description, the best description I've ever heard of a difference between a strong reference and a weak reference is a strong reference is like, like I happen to have a tape measure here, right? So a strong reference is like if I have this tape measure in my hand, right? So no one can take it away. So it can't get garbage collected, right? Um, and so therefore you can potentially get memory leaks. 
maybe. Um, but a weak reference is more like just putting your finger to it, right? And so therefore it can go away and that's cool, right? It's not gonna stop this thing getting garbage collected. Um, and so this view transition holds a weak reference to it. Now, of course, what happens is when the hot reload happens, it recreates all the controls. And so therefore what we have to do is we we basically lose reference to the to the visual element, which makes sense. Um, and so I, I put in a little bit of hacky code here. Um, it's not pretty, like a lot of my code, but basically um, when the size changes, right? We, we set up our states and we go to a particular state, but when you do a refresh, you just get an on appearing, right? And so what I had to do was I had to basically say, um, you know, if I've, if I've, if it's coming through a second time under a hot reload, right? The size has already been calculated because it's up here. Um, then I basically go and, and set up those animation states again, right? So that's the, the, the situation here, okay? Um, so anyway, that, that fixed the problem, which is cool, which means we can now do, we can now do hot reloads and it doesn't break all of our animation. So theoretically, if I hot reload this, yeah, we're now still in a, a decent state. Cool. All right, here's a random question for you. <laughs> How would you go about having a tab bar with a corner radius? Can you actually customize a tab bar? Um, you can. Uh, you'd have to probably fall down to a renderer, I'm guessing, if you're using a, um, you know, the sort of inbuilt one. There is, uh, there is a few implementations of tabs which are done just with... Uh, Xamarin Forms controls. That might be a better option if you need to customize it heaps. Um, I'm just trying to think of some. Um, there are a few. I'm just trying to think where, what it is. There is a... Did a blog about it, did he? You know, yeah, I think, who, who else did it? Um, didn't Sharp NATO do some tabs? There we are. Here's an interesting one. <laughs> Eggs. I always love reading his blog posts. Uh, so this is one that has, this is an implementation, I think. If we scroll down here enough, he does some pretty wacky tabs. Yeah, look, here's, uh, here's some pretty wacky tabs. Right, so these are like fully custom drawn. Um, so you can certainly um, use something like that. That's probably where I'd go, actually. Otherwise, I think it's, uh, uh, if you wanted to use the normal Tab control, I think it would be a custom renderer. All right, cool. So let's um, let's deal with this. Let's deal with this ruler, first of all. Okay, so the idea with this ruler, is my little pen working, is we want this ruler that goes from, I'll put this in green, right? That goes across here. Okay, and it's got some little lines on it. Do, 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 do. Something like, yeah, <laughs> hopefully a little bit straighter than that. Um, and it's basically a line with a bunch of, uh, of, of dots along it. I think um, you like that. I think probably uh, the best option for, for that one 
is going to be skier sharp just to draw that and one nice thing is it actually just sort of maintains the size if we have a look at the if we have a look at the actual design that ruler appears and it goes from sort of the center of the small across to the edge okay and um and it basically doesn't change size what what does change size is the thumb You, you, you prefer you prefer a ruler like this, do you? All right, maybe maybe we'll just hand draw it, create a, create a bitmap of this, and then put it over it. Yeah, maybe not. All right, cool. So let's um, let's let's try and knock this off then, shall we? Um, let's start with adding in skier sharp. <laughs> Looks more artisanal. It's more hipster, right? handcrafted lines let me stop this let me add in some some new get packages as much as i'd love to go with loxon's approach of um of a, a bunch of box views i think uh i think that's probably a bad idea so what do we have to skier sharp forms That's right. It's got its own custom metric system. All right. So I've got a bit of skier sharp in there. So what I'm going to need is I'm going to need to bring in the skier namespace. Do, do, do. Skier views forms, something like that. And then we're going to have to put in a skier canvas. And let's call this our pizza ruler. So in order that in order that we get it to resize to the right place, we're going to have to probably position this in code. But first, we have a paint. <laughs> what's <laughs> what's the yeah? What's the 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 magic number? What's the hard coded number that you're going to be having today? Yeah, that's a fair comment. Forty-two, always forty-two. Absolutely, Rob. <clears throat> okay, I feel like some of this code needs to be cleaned up at, at some point. Um, it's getting a little bit, it's getting a little bit nasty. But all it's basically doing is just working out the positions of our pizza. We're using this uh, view transition to work out where all of the various things are going to be. So, for example, uh, we've got our different states. We've got start. We've got entrance. We've got small pizzas, medium pizzas, large pizzas. And the cool thing is we can just go to those states and it does all the animations for us. So it's a really nice little helper. We're going to start off by saying um, our pizza, pizza ruler, when we're in the start or the entering uh, states, it's going to be not visible. So its opacity is going to be zero. Beautiful. All right. We're then going to say, okay, when we're in a, when we're in a small, uh, a medium, or a large, it's going to be visible. And then we've got the whole question of where it's going to be. Right. So in order to work that out, we want to go from the middle of 
the small rectangle, right? So where it is as a, as a small pizza. Um, and we want it to sort of go out towards the edge of the screen effectively. So let me just calculate this here. So if we had like our, our ruler rectangle, excuse me, I got an itchy eye. I shouldn't be touching my face, right? During Corona times. Um, so this is going to be a new rectangle. So where do we want this to go from? We want it to go from an X position of halfway, right smack bang in the middle of a small rectangle. So, um, so to get that, the rectangle doesn't have a midpoint. So we could say, get a small rectangle, uh, dot left plus half of its width. And we want to do something sort of similar for our Y. So from the top plus half of its height. What do we need next? We need a, we need a, a width. All right. So the width is going to be a little bit interesting. The width is going to be from, uh, oops, my simulators closed there. Um, So Lachlan says, do I have a pattern for working with different number of types, different number types in Skier Sharp? I always find myself with so many casts. Yeah, look, I'm the, I'm the same Lachlan. Um, no, I don't is the simple answer. I end up with loads and loads of casts. Um, I was thinking about maybe extension methods, um, which would be, you know, like two, to pixel you could do that i'm not sure if it's going to make it much nicer though but no it's it's a it's a challenge right and also there yeah the difference between like doubles and floats all the time so yeah i i, I don't know the answer to that all right let's put in some magic numbers so let's get like our width width of our screen Let's add a margin in. <laughs> C sharp looks like objective C. I love it. So here's our magic number because we're at Kim's pizza shop, right? So that's the, that's the margin, right? So that will bring us in from the side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract, um, basically our starting point. Right, I think that should work because if we imagine, you know, we've got our screen here, we're getting the width minus 20, whoop, right? And then we've got our sort of image over here. We've got this point in the middle. So we basically want to subtract that amount, right? So we get our left minus our width. All right, maybe. And our height, uh, our height's just going to be a, 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 it doesn't change height. So we'll, we'll jam in another magic number. Why not? And what we also want to do is we want to make sure that we're laying our control out to this size. I wonder if we could, I mean, I could just jam this into a method, right? Might be a little bit nicer, but anyway, let's say um, we create ourselves a, a, a view transition um, and we say, okay, well, let's lay out the pizza ruler to the ruler rect. So that's how big we want it to be. Under a small, 
we don't really care on the, the start and the entrance. So let's put that in there. Let's try this. Put that in there. Now what I'll do as well is come back to my main page, wherever my ruler rect is, pizza ruler. I'm just gonna give this a background color for a moment, just so we can see how big it is. And I might, let's just try this. We'll give it a height request of, of 10. That's how we decided how big it was gonna be. I don't know if that's gonna make a difference. Probably not. Let's try run that and see if we get a ruler in the right spot. Before we actually draw all the tick marks, let's just check that we have the control position correctly. Meanwhile, let's get a coffee. Who's registered for build? I am. You should be too. It's going to be my first time I ever get to attend build. <laughs> Thanks, coronavirus. MJ Freelancing, you are. You'll be building, Lachlan. Awesome. Let's face it, there's no reason not to, right? It's free and it's live. Sometimes things don't work. And sometimes things don't work, like I got an error. I hate these commas at the end of these things. Roll as you're going. Beautiful. Let's wait for that build. Come on, build. I hate the dangling comma. In fact, I hate creating things in line like this pretty much, but it's just so much cleaner to look at. It just sucks a debug. All right. So there's a, um, there's a ruler. Only appears when we're in that state. That's good. Let's have a quick look at the just to make sure that is the case. I feel like it might be a bit long here because I should have had it truncated a little bit. Let's have a look. I think I might've done my maths wrong, which is not surprising. Better than a dangling pointer. What do you think? That pizza ruler, background of red. Um, where's my... So the X is there. Do you think that should be a plus? It looks about right. The width one is there. I'm just worried that it's actually going off the screen. In fact, I'd love to see what that's coming up with. Let's have a look. So the width is 474. Let's throw another magic number in. If in doubt, throw another magic number in. Hmm. Doesn't feel right. 
I mean, it's in the right position, so that's a good thing. The width minus 40 minus the left side of my rectangle. Oh, wait on. Let's, let's throw a few more brackets in. Are you in doubt? Throw more brackets in. That's my that's pretty much my guidelines, right? So if you if in doubt, throw more brackets in or put in more magic numbers. Ah, see. More brackets fixed it. I think it needs to be longer now. I think 20 was the right amount, because that's the it's basically the size this pizza's going to. Alright. But look, I think we've got uh we've got a workable ruler. So now it's time to uh, to to go and do some skier sharp. All right, cool. There's our ruler. So we're gonna need to draw some tick marks. <clears throat> so basically, I think all we really need to do is um, if we have a look at the uh, the rendering here. Oops. Let me see if I can catch it when uh, at the right point in the animation. And let's have a look what the ruler is like. I think the ruler has uh, got two different size ticks on it. See here? I think it's like if, if I was to draw my artisanal um, ruler, it would look like this. It would go from like here to here, and then it would have big strokes, and then, <laughs> and then little strokes, and then big strokes using my own numeric system here based on four, um, something like that. All right. So we have a painting surface here. So, um, what we want to do is we want to draw ticks. Um, well, we could probably just do it straight in here. Okay, so let's. Um, so there's some code that I have that does something similar. Um, if I go and have a look at the day versus night. Okay, so day versus night had some little ticks along here, along this ruler. Um, and basically, all I did was in the gauge control, right? Basically got the number of ticks we needed, work out how big it needs to be, then iterate through and draw some lines. In this case, they happen to be uh, gradient lines. We don't need gradient lines, but we want something pretty similar. So let's get um, like a, a number of well, first, first things first, what we need to do is we need to draw the main ruler line. Then we need to draw the ticks. Beautiful. All right. Um, we need to have a brush. So we'll have a SK paint object. Um, and that's going to have things like a color, which is going to be white. We're going to have uh, a stroke width, which maybe we'll make it two. Might show up a little bit better. We're going to have a, uh, what's it called? Where is it? I basically want to say I want it to just be a, a stroke. I think it's style. Paint style of, because we don't want it to fill, right? We just want it to be a line. Cool. So we got a ruler. 
Um, so now we want to basically work out uh, where we want it to go from. Well, actually our control is the right size. So we could actually just sort of say uh, off our canvas, do, 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 which is, uh, is it info canvas? No. Surface dot canvas. So off our canvas, we want to say canvas dot draw line. And we pretty much want to go from um, a point here. So we want to go from zero, zero. Let's just from zero, zero to um, oops. Visual Studio has gone milky. Um, we want to go through for, to to our, our width. At zero. All right. The reason we're, we're going to do it at zero is because. Where are you? If we have a look at this, it's actually like the line looks like, like this, right? It's not like this. All right, cool. And what do we need in our draw line? We need a paint object probably. So that's going to be our ruler paint. No, don't like it. Okay, I got that wrong. What do we need? Oh, paint object is the last parameter. Okay. Ruler paint. Beauty. Okay, um, so that draws our main ruler line. Cool. Now we're going to draw the ticks. So pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to divide this up, this uh, into however many ticks that we want. Uh, so we'll say a number of ticks. We'll start off with like, I don't know, 30 or something. We can adjust it. Um, we need to work out the distance between ticks, which is going to be the width which is going to be e dot info dot e dot info dot width um, divided by the number of ticks. All right, cool. Um, and then we basically um, do a for loop, right? For the number of ticks. Something like that. Um, and we basically just want to say, we want to go uh, on our canvas, draw a line um, at the top and go down. So let's do that at uh, X is going to be I times the distance between ticks. The Y is going to be zero and we'll draw that down to to perhaps the height of it just to start off with. Let's we'll see if this works. Uh, so canvas on oh no, e.info dot height. And we'll use our ruler paint. How's that? No, new point. 
blah, blah, blah. That didn't work. Xamarin forms. Let's send you SK point. Okay, cool. All right. So probably what we have is we've probably got a bunch of, of lines, hopefully. Beautiful. All right, we could do without the red background, probably. Let's get rid of the red background. We know it's in the right spot now. Cool. So it looks a little bit weird. I think that's just the, the sizing of this. Probably want to tick at the end. So maybe I need to change that to be less than or equal to number of ticks. The other thing that we probably want here as well is this rule is a little bit fancier, right? It has every fifth one, as rulers do, is a long one. The ones in between are short ones. Who remembers their maths? How do we work out every fifth one? So let's fix that bug there. Don't we do, couldn't we say if I um, like modulo five, yeah, mod five, modulo five. If I modulo five, equals zero, is that how we roll? I wonder if I should just work out the height. Let's do that. So let's say if if I modulo five equals zero, then the height. Let's do this var tick height. It's probably gonna be a float. <laughs> Rob says it's UIs like this that I love as a user but as a developer I think what the hell is the point of the animation and the ruler etc etc they can just order a pizza with a couple of entry boxes pickers and a button absolutely like that's that's the thing right designers go crazy like like this pulsing I don't know I mean that's cool I like that I mean, it's like little bits of visual feedback, right? Look, Rob, it keeps me busy on a, uh, it keeps me busy on a Friday. That's all I know. So we could say the tick height equals every fifth one or the zeroth one is the height. Um, Otherwise, the tick height is going to be equal to, say, half the height. And then you come here and you change it to a conditional expression. Because then it's even harder to read. Gratuitous animation, exactly. Let's see if that works. It should work. Hey, look at that. What a ruler. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. What a ruler. All right. Victory. Now what we need is we need a gratuitous thumb, right? It's actually kind of not really a thumb because you can't slide it because even at uh, Kim's Pizza Shop, you can't just specify a particular size, right? You've got three choices. You've got small, you've got medium, you've got large. Technically, we I, I suppose we could have a slider and we could do that, but let's not. Instead, let's just have a, let's just have a circle that's here and we'll basically move it along. So it goes from there to there to there. And of course it changes direction as well, just to make it painful. <laughs> oh dear hang on a second I gotta put that up so uh oh no not my Rona hair I'm not talking about my Rona hair this is what I wanted to put up from Void Lord uh, enjoying the stream that's cool Thank you. Uh, I know what I'm making, but I miss the why. It's a really good question. Why? Um, the reason why is I basically just like playing around, trying to implement wacky UIs in Xamarin Forms. So there is no real why other than, well, actually for me, the why is I like design, but I'm a bit crap at it, right? Um, and so what I, what I try and do is I try and get, um, UIs that I like and implement them. And as I implement them, I've got to kind of break them apart and see how they work. Um, and so that's what I do on a Friday. That's, that's basically what I do. Void Lord is, is just get wacky UIs and, and implement them. Rob's also onto it. It's for the money, fame and power. Um, yeah, not so much. Like uh, I think I said in a previous stream, it's like there's quite a few Xamarin streamers, but none of us are ever going to make any money out of Twitch. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, it's it's just for the love of it. Hopefully that answers your question, Void Lord, which is basically just explore design, um, explore how to implement design as well. And I figure eventually... Um, I'll probably end up seeing enough patterns. I'm going to be able to start like refactoring this code into something a bit more useful. Um, yeah. All right. I think we've got our ruler, right? We've got our ruler. Our ruler's there. Beautiful. Now what we need is we need a thumb, right? Um, it's not really a thumb. It's kind of like just a button that allows us to, to swap between our sizes. So, I reckon we can just like throw in a box view here. We'll make this the accent color. Um, and we'll just sort of make it, we'll give it a width request of like 30. We'll give it a height request of like 30. We'll say, let's just center it. Cool. Uh, we're going to have to position this puppy as well. Today we're gonna code lots. Hey, Tillman32. Thanks for the follow.
Woot woot. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to um <laughs> welcome to the the stream where we design you eyes, but we're not sure why. All right, we got a box view. We need to position this. This code's getting painful. If anyone's got any tips or any thoughts on how we can simplify all of this, I'm all ears. I mean, this code's only run once, so it's not that bad, but maybe extract them all out into methods would be a good idea. Pizza's good. Love pizza. Um, so what we could... Also watch some of your content in Xamarin University. So yeah, Xamarin University, I haven't done anything on Pluralsight unless the Xamarin University videos went to Pluralsight, but I don't think they did. Um, but yeah, fantastic. <clears throat> All right. So what we need to do is we need to work out um, Basically, how big or where that thumb is going to be. Fruity drinks. Hey, fruity drinks. Welcome. Are oh, they on YouTube? Okay. For those of you um, probably familiar with Rob, Rob Zamu Legend, also. Fruity drink. Um, okay. What would happen here if instead of writing this in line, why don't we do this? Why don't we say, why don't we write a method? Calculate thumb position. Right. And the thumb is going to be at the end it's always going to be at the end of the pizza, right? So if we have a look at the rectangle that the pizza occupies and we just sort of say, hey, let's splat it on the right-hand side of that, that'll probably work, right? So we'll pass in a the rectangle. So in this case, the rectangle of the pizza. And we're going to get a rectangle back out of this. Right, so something like that. So we'll generate this method and then we'll say, hey, where you're gonna where you're basically gonna gonna be is we're gonna create a rectangle. And this rectangle is going to not crash my Visual Studio, hopefully. Or maybe it will. I just got this pop up. Um, it said, it said, hey, I'm going to report this to Microsoft. The fact that um, it took so long. That's interesting. All right. Um, naming different functions and variables might be the hardest part of programming. I agree. It's probably the most important as well, right? Because it's what, it's what makes your code readable. So uh, the exposition of this is going to be, let's not call this. Um, we'll call this like pizza size. Um, the exposition of it is going to be like the pizza size dot right minus half the width, right? We say it's going to be like 15. 
Well, you said it was going to be 30, so I'll make it 15. Y is going to be the pizza size dot. Um, like the top plus what well, needs to be halfway. So we'll say pizza size dot height divided by two minus half of our height. The width is going to be 30. The height is going to be 30. Um, and then actually we can just return this. Okay. So, um, Tromenia, extra menia. Uh, sometimes I can't even look it up your own code after one week. If the function names are wrong. Yeah, I, I know. So we calculate the thumb position. So that's where our thumb wants to be. Do we have a name for our thumb? Let's give it a name. Okay, let's call it pizza ruler thumb. Because that one's going to be confusing in a few days as well. Um, and then we're basically going to say pizza rule of thumb. It's layout is going to be our thumb pause. But seeing as we've got that in a method, we can actually just use a method name, right? Let's, let's just do this. So calculating it each time or instead of having a variable for each one let's just call it in line say yep okay cool that's going to be based on there and also we need to actually make it visible as well So it's going to be visible. Oops, and then delete it for some reason. Okay, cool. And now for each of our different states, we basically just say, hey, make this positioned based on the size of the pizza. That's probably going to work. Do, do, do. The other thing I need to do is I need to make sure it's not visible in our initial states. All right. Let's see what that does. I almost feel like this would be better done as like a fluent method. Hmm. Anyway, let's not worry about that at the moment. Right now, let's... There's my simulator, my emulator. All right. Oh yeah, so it's based on the rightmost position. Cool. Um, it's a little bit square for my liking. Let's give it a corner radius. There we are. That's much nicer, right? There we are. Now we want that 
when we click that, that's actually going to be the thing that navigates our state as opposed to clicking on the pizza. So this is where um, UIs get weird, right? Because if we have a look at the initial design, they only kind of show half of the work, <laughs> right? So basically you click on the thumb, it goes to there, it goes to there. Now, presumably if you click it again, it goes back and it just sort of alternates between the three different sizes. That would be my guess. That's how I would, if I was designing a gratuitous UI with lots of, um, lots of animations and stuff like that, that's probably how I'd do it. So let's just get that working first, shall we? So let's add a gesture recognizer. I really hate how um, how when you create a method and a tap gesture recognizer, it just calls it like a generic tap gesture. Whereas if you create other things, it'll actually use the name of the control. I suppose it's because it's just using this. But we we're talking about naming, so let's rename this. Let's rename this to uh, pizza. Rule of thumb tapped because that's so much more readable. Find where it stuck that method, which is down here. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to say So we're gonna to navigate to the next state. So um, I suppose we could do a switch on it, right? I don't know. So we do have our animation. And uh, what's our animation helper called? It's called anim state, yeah. Um, go to, okay, well, we don't want to do that. We want to get its current state. So if we're on small, We want to go to medium, right? That look right. If you're on medium, we want to go to to large. Um, and actually, if we're on, oh, this is interesting. If we're on large, go to small, maybe. Maybe that's what we do. What do you think? Like that? 
probably about right. We click on this, we go through our various states. Yeah, I think that works. All right, uh, what do we need next? We need, we need an arrow on it, right? It's like a little chevron-y thing. Why don't we, um, Should we just use a label? Let's use a label. So what we could do is we could say, let's make this, uh, let's put this inside a grid. Oops, I think it's gonna break it. Your visual studio is gonna complain about that one. Okay, um, and We'll actually make this pizza rule thumb. And then apart from our box view, we will also have a label. And let's just go with that for the moment. center it horizontally and vertically. <laughs> wow. Okay, greater than. Love it. Hey Dan 602, how you doing? We're creating a completely useless slider at the moment. Well, it's actually not completely useless, it's just a bit wacky. It adjusts the size of our pizza. Dan, cheered 100 bits, well done Dan. Nice work. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, look at that. If I tap right on the label, it doesn't do anything. So that's because it's getting the focus. So we want to set its input transparent to true. And that will stop it. And now we can tap smack bang on that label. Okay, so. Let's try this. Let's whack in some code. And we might abstract this all out into a control later on. It might be good to have it as a control. Um, but basically when we go to a, when we go to a, a large state. We also want to rotate this whole thing around, right? So that the arrow is pointing that away. So let's try this. Pizza rule of thumb dot rotate to, um, what would it be? Minus 180? And when, so that's when we go to a large, right? 
Actually, do you want to do that? Why don't we just do it in the, why don't we just do it in the state, in, in the state engine? That would make sense, wouldn't it? So when we're at a state of large, when we're at a state of large, we'll make that arrow go that away. When it's small, it'll go that away. Okay, so we'll say animation type dot rotation. And it's going to have a value of minus, no, it's going to have a value of, of zero. Here. It's going to have a value of zero. Here, when it's a medium. And then when it's a large, it's going to be rotated minus 180. Or 180, probably doesn't, doesn't matter. Depends which way we want it to spin. So I think that would then make it flip around when it gets to the end. Whoop. Yeah, it probably works. We need a better image, I think, for that uh, that thumb. But it's basically right. Cool. Because you don't really get any hints from this one, what it should do. What we do know is when it goes to the last state, so it's sitting there and then it flips around. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, what's next? <laughs> next, we've got this little pulsy animation thing going on. Some would call it gratuitous. I would call it gratuitous. All right. Let's create ourselves an animation here. This is our pulse animation. Start the thumb pulsing. Now it's actually not the whole thumb, it's actually just the label. Come on, Visual Studio. Maybe I need to update Visual Studio. I've noticed Visual Studio, whenever I'm changing names on XAML controls, it does a little bit of a lockup. Oh, or it just outright crashes. Wow. <clears throat> awesome. It must have just got like sick of my magic numbers.
There we go. Let's position back here. Beautiful. Let's try that again. Should I give that a name again? Pizza rule of thumb. So we kind of want to create a continuous animation. For that label. Which is basically just translating its X back and forth just like on um something like something like that all right so in order to do that let's um let's set up our pulse as a new animation let's add an animation to it Okay, so for half the time, beginning at zero, finishing at 0.5, new animation. And we basically want to say, um, something like our What do we call that? I didn't, we didn't save it. Pizza thumb label. Dot translation X equals that animated value. Going from like zero to, we only want to animate a little bit, right? So maybe like five or 10. We'll try five, we'll see if it's too, too wacky. We might give it an easing, I think. Maybe like a sign in out. So it sort of speeds up and slows down. Okay, cool. And then we'll add one, another animation from 0.5 to one. So the second half of the animation, which is gonna take our value from five back to zero. All right, cool. And then Let's uh, start the animation continuously. So I should be able to say pulse start commit. The owner is this, we'll call it the pulse animation. And what we want is we want our repeat to basically, it's a function returns a bool. We just want to say true. And we'll probably want to give it a timing as well. Wait on. Uh, so the length will make it like half a second, maybe. Let's see if that works. So that's like a, a continuous animation, theoretically. <laughs> I 
All right. That's pretty cool. So now we've got this like little annoying thumb here, which is uh, telling us our direction, right? Speaking of gratuitous animations, that seems like a pretty gratuitous animation to have running the whole time. All right, but look, it works. I think it's a bit far. I think it's it's a little too big. It needs to be a little bit more. Let's have a look at the real design. Yeah, it's sort of just sitting there, flapping back and forth. I'd say that's reasonable. Maybe it wants to go from from the negative. Maybe we'll, we'll change it a little bit. We'll go from like. Nah, I'm going to just leave it there. That, that's fine. That's not too bad. All right, fantastic. Well, um, I'm gonna have a quick break. I'm gonna um, duck to the toilet. Now that we've got that working and then we can uh, fix up a few other things. We can uh, perhaps fix up this button down here because it's actually uh, when we click a pizza. Click this button. It's actually the wrong button. So maybe we should change the state of that. All right, so let me go, uh, let me duck off for five, have a break, grab a stretch. See you in five. Remember, if you leave, you get banned.
put in a nougat of things to say. I like it. All right. So we got our pizza sizes going on. Where's our task list? Let's see what we actually did. Okay, so we're changing the pizza size based on the thumb change, done that. Um, okay, let's have a look here. Um, so if we have a look at the initial design, When we start out, this says add to cart. At the moment, add to cart is putting it in there. That's actually not right. What it should be doing is when we're changing this size here, we basically go to a place order button. When we say add to cart, we have place order. We got one of those cool Ferris labels going on here. All right. So we need another button, a place order button. So at the moment we've got a button down here, which is our add to cart. Cool. We need another button of a similar style. So let's do this. Let's, instead of just copying this, let's make a style out of this. And let's see if, Let's go and use mFractor. Let's extract a XAML style. All right, and we'll make this let's not call it button. Let's call it our um, accent button. And we're probably, no, we can leave it in this page. So put in this page. Okay. Let's see if that worked. Put in our accent button up here. Beautiful. We'll move this down below our colors. So we have an add to cart button. We'll also have another button here, which is um what was it? Place order. Now interesting, I think we're gonna have to do something with the text for this right because that dynamically updates add to cart is there and then it changes to place order but we actually have two bits going on with the label here so I don't think the text is going to do it for us for the moment though let's let's just check this works so we'll say We'll just put the text in place order. Um, all right. And so then we'll adjust our states so that we need to control
our order button, our place order button. So when we're in the starting state, it's got an opacity of zero. But also our add, is that the right, is that the right way? Place order is when we are in this state. Add to cart is when we're in the full state. So add to cart button is, is visible. Hey Dragon, how you doing? Welcome. We, um, we've done a few things. We're just sort of rejigging the way the buttons are working. Um, okay, so if we run this now, you missed, we, we um, Playing games with some friends. Man, I gotta play some more games. Um one thing I have been playing is Half-Life Alex. Which is um which is pretty cool. So a VR game. Lots of fun. Alright, so we got our little a little ruler and we've got our animation going on here. We've got the right button there, place order. Yeah, the rule is just a little bit of scare sharp. Okay, so we have add to cart here. Okay, now we're gonna have to do something with this place order uh, text because we actually need it to, um, we're gonna need this to have the, the total in here as well. As we change this total here, which we should default to one. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> it goes from one to three. What do you want, one or three pizzas? I gotta get rid of the tap off of there. So the tap off of there has got to go onto this button. Only on that button. When we change that, how does this work? So every time you change a quantity, it does this animation down. That would be super annoying. But anyway, it is what it is. Medium. Uh, what's that? Medium text and showing small size pizza. Is it? Ah, we're not updating these as we change our state. Good call. It's also a little bit far away as well. Let's adjust that. All right, let's, let's worry about that one in just a moment. Let's put it on our to-do list. Um, let's say, hey, 
Okay, cool. So we're going to have place order here. Well, actually, let's let's do this first. When we hit the plus or mi plus or minus, let's animate it down to here. So animate flying pizza when changing quantity. Oops, don't want to save that. All right, so we just got it hooked up to the wrong thing, I feel. So at the moment when we hit the, the place order, that's where we do it. So where's our place order button? It's got this nice method called button clicked. Very cool. All right, so let's actually extract this into a method. And we'll call this method something like um, Pizza Fly. Oh, yeah, okay, Pizza Fly. So it doesn't want to happen here, right? So actually what we want to do is we want to say, this is our Add to Cart button. So I'll give this a new name. I'll stop this, I'll make this main page. So this is gonna be called Add to Cart button clicked. Wow, Dragon, I had, a, <laughs> I had a hose burst coming out of your water heater on Monday this week. Almost made my kitchen ceiling collapse. I noticed water coming out of the ceiling at 238. That's terrifying. What did you do? I got it called a plumber, I bet. So when we hit add to cart, we want to go to called your dad freaking out. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably what I'd do as well. <laughs> but then we're in lockdown, so they can't come over. So when we had add to cart, we go to a small state. Cool. Uh, that doesn't have to be an async anymore. Well, that's uh, that's terrible, Dragon. I hope you I hope it got fixed. Help you change the hose. Wow. Oh, well, I'm pleased it probably worked out nicely for you. All good? Wonderful. Victory. <laughs> Sounds worse than Lachlan's leaky extraction. I doubt it. I doubt it. Because at least Dragons is fixed. I don't think we do anything with place order at the moment. So place order would take us to a, a shopping cart, presumably. So we don't have to do anything there. What we do have to do is when we hit that button, we need to fly that pizza. So, um, So where's our button that we added? So this is where we go and we fly a pizza. What do we call that method? Pizza fly. 
Naming. Naming's hard. <laughs> the beats of fly. I love it. Uh, all right, let's put an async void here because async voids are the devil. Do we want to await it? Do we care? Maybe. Well, at least a pizza fly sounds better than like those those killer hornets or whatever they are, killer wasps. There we go. Okay, but now our place order button isn't swallowing it like it should. This sounds terrible. Okay, so we currently have some code. Oh, I know why. Because we're adjusting it add to cart button. We don't want to add just a add to cart button. We want this to actually be our place order button. That should fix that, I think. Murder hornets. Yeah, exactly. Do you see there was a video of some guy making a murder hornet bite him? That's a very Australian thing to do. Oh. There we are. Nice. All right, so now we need to deal with this text, right? I feel like the pizza should fly out of there back up. That would be cool. That would make that animation almost, uh, <laughs> almost useful. All right, let's perhaps do this text first. So we, uh, we did that. We did the animation of the flying pizza when changing the quantity. So now let's have the price displayed down here. So we can use our Ferris label, right? But we're going to have to put this in a some kind of container, I think. And everyone knows the only right container is a grid. So then what would happen if we had, we're gonna have to move this into grid row one. And then we're going to have a label, which is probably something like place order. Um, in fact, there's probably going to be like a stack layout here or something. So 
So what I'm trying to do here is this bit here where we've got place order and then a quantity and it changes. Stick a ferrous label in there. Can we do a binding with a formatted string for labels? Yeah, totally. You totally can. But in my case, that's not going to work. Yeah, you can. But these are going to have to be two different labels. You can't do it with a color. Oh, could you? Yeah, anyway, it's they're two different controls in this case, because one of them is our, our Ferris button. So let's just do this for fun. Let's say, we have our place order. We've got our Ferris label. Yeah, I'd lose my Ferris label using a formatted string. That's right. So what does this actually display? It's the size. And the quantity. So we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to do some code here before we fly the pizza. Actually, it's probably when we change the size. Hmm. Have a look at this again. So it's pretty much just saying when that changes, we update the quantity times the price for the size. I think. Glim, hello. How are you doing? Looks good. Yeah, it's going to be messy, but yeah, it's, it's going all right. How is it? Um, I, I really, uh, I really like Xamarin. Yeah. Lots of .NET. There's lots of .NET in Xamarin, that's for sure. Um, yeah, if you've done lots of .NET, if you've done like, you know, UWP or WPF, it's, it's pretty, pretty easy to get across. Let's do this. Let's update our price. Let's create a method called update price. Uh, we should probably pass in the current quantity. I wonder if you should pass in the size as well. Uh, we can probably just do that by saying our current state, which is an enum actually. Let's just see what we get out of that. Today we're gonna code lots. We'll Hi, Stevens Mitchell. Welcome. Thanks for the follow.
We're just doing some some uh, Xamarin Forms UI. Before we do this, before we do the state, let's just do this. Let's just say, uh, what's our button? Oh, what's our Ferris label going to be called? Let's give it a name. Call it order total. And then we'll do something like we'll say, um, order total dot text equals, um, and then we have to get the size. So let's just, let's just jam in a value at the moment. Xamarin's full of, of XAML for the UI. You can do it in, in, in XAML. I prefer using XAML for it, but you don't have to. Um, you can actually do it in, all in code behind, sort of like you do in good old Windows forms. So you can certainly do that as well. I just prefer a XAML approach. Let's just put this in at the moment. What do we want this to be? What should our currency be? Yeah, definitely take a look at it for sure. No. So if we say update price, we got a quantity. We'll have a, like a base price here. Um, it's actually pretty good. It's all um, it's all compiled down nicely. So um, yeah, Xamarin apps apps perform very well. <laughs> Chickens and goat. I think that's where we're going to end up at the end of coronavirus dragon. The the basic unit of currency is going to be goats and chickens. Uh, how should we represent this? Is this like, what's a, what's a, what's a money thing? Um, a double? Uh, and then we'll get... Let's, we actually want to format this, right? So let's just let's just do this for a second. Um, how do we display money? Anyone, anyone remember how we do money? Currency. That was a bad one. Okay. C. We do C. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, all right. Let 
Probably gonna get a value to string. All right, cool. Hey, ah, oh, TBD Gamer. Hello. Welcome to, uh, welcome to the stream people, Raiders. So uh, welcome everyone. We're just doing a little bit of, um, a little bit of UI in Xamarin Forms. How was your, how was your stream TDB Gamer? TBD Gamer? You're, um, you're probably looking at different mobile platforms, right? I think that's last time I saw you, that's what you were doing. You were deciding on a mobile platform. Did you decide on one? Oh, you got a Xamarin Forms app working tonight. Beautiful. Well, what we're doing at the moment, um, let me let me show you. I'm in the middle of, of something pretty boring right at the moment, but um, what we're doing, let me just load this up in an emulator for you. We're doing a Xamarin Forms UI. Um, <laughs> three, three cheers for choosing Xamarin. Fantastic. But I'm pleased you had a good stream. So this is Xamarin Forms UI. We've got ourselves a, a pizza here, um, pizza shop, and we're basically allowing somebody to choose the size of their pizza. So uh, we can go through there and they can also, there's a few bugs in here, but uh, they can change the quantity of the pizza. And it's flying that information down here. And what we're doing at the moment is we're just uh, basically uh, kind of update our, our order quantity in there as well. So that's what, that's what we're working on. Yeah, the, the animation when adding the pizza is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> the rest of it's a bit gratuitous, like in terms of choosing the size and this little arrow that's, that's pulsing back and forth. But yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, look, I, 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 broke, I broke this text over here. So it no longer says small, medium, large. It does if I do this. I haven't got rid of this. If I do that and small, medium, large. I just uh, not handling it off here very well. Beautiful. All right. So what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to get um, that times the the quantity something 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 like two string, right? Um, and then I'm basically saying. Two string C or something. Do, do, do. All right. What's going on here? That times that. Oh, all right. All right. So that should give us that. And then we'll try changing our order text to be the pizza price. Oh, so value two strings zero C two. Yeah, I don't know. Like these are one of those things that I never ever uh, remember. How's that look? That work? Zero colon C. Let's find out. Let's find out. This will be pretty messy. Yeah. <laughs> String formats, they, they break my head. I don't know why. I've only done it like a million times.
This button here needs to actually animate us here. <laughs> well, that didn't work. I guess we need a C2. Today we're gonna code lots with Mr. Kim Phil Hey, thanks for the follow. You're watching uh, a grown adult struggle with string format. All right, let's put it in the right place as a starting point. So let's get rid of... Uh, do, do, do. Let's do this. Uh, vertical option center. Horizontal option center. Is that going to fix the location of it for us? Let's have a look. Place order. Oh, our, uh, our orientation should be horizontal. Why does that look so terrible? Your, uh, let's have a look. My, my squiggly bracket shouldn't be used in two string. Okay, cool. Good. Well, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of squiggly brackets. Do I need to do a C2? What do you think? Let's try C2. Let's see what we get. Just use value C. Yeah, okay. Might be a good idea. All right. Well, it gives us the right value. But, um... <laughs> this is what the immediate window is for. I never use the immediate window. But you're absolutely right. String format, zero CT value. See, that's the problem with string format, right? Is that um, <laughs> is there's so many ways you can represent it. That's why it drives me crazy. All right, I'm going to go with MJ freelancing, right? Because that seems like a better solution to me. Today we're going to code lots with Mr. Kim, Phil, Potts, and oh, how amazing. Not all currencies are two decimal places. And thanks for the follow. Umatani. All right, so uh, what you're telling me is I can do this. Um, hmm. I need to put those brackets in. Colon C. That's not going to work, is it? Is that going to work? Yeah. Well, let's let's at least provide a helper. <laughs> let's <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah, well. All right. Well, that's it. That's worked. MJ freelancing, that's worked. That's beautiful. Now, the question is, why is this all weird? Why is this all position of all this weird? 
So I'm gonna, I... Uh, I've got a, it's in grid row one. Let's put a vertical option of fill, horizontal options of fill. I've got a stack layout. My button's in the right place. And all I need is I need this puppy to go into the center. Uh, maybe it's because of this. All right. Now, interestingly, let's get rid of this text here. Wow. That pit. <laughs> <laughs> My flying pizza's gone crazy. <laughs> All right. Let's first deal with this positioning of it. Why is this here? Let's put a bit of background color in here. Where are you, stack layout? You're there. All right, so let's, let's make you bigger. Right. Now let's make you In the center. Okay. And then let's make you in the center. And let's make you have some horizontal options. No. Well, actually, it shouldn't matter, should it? Probably what are we ending up with there? Okay. So stack lights take up the entire space. That's all right. We have a label which is centered vertically. I think this one's eating up all the space. <laughs> no, not using any space. <laughs> this is why stack layouts suck. All right.
Add some expensive pizzas. Now, the other interesting thing is when I'm changing that text. Ah, Twitch newbie here, but the emulator got right behind your cam. <laughs> no, it's because I went and jammed it behind there and I'm like playing around with it. I should have it over here. Thank you for... Uh, Excellent. All right. So I'm just kind of debugging why this is happening. So the reason this pizza is flying out here, I'm pretty sure is because I need to adjust this button inside of this grid. All right. So I'm not that worried about that. All right. How big is this? Now just let me have a look at my other Ferris button here. label got that so they're now positioned correctly which is good that is clearly going to the wrong spot the thing I'm I'm not sure about here is is that should be flipping up because that's what happens when we change the total on a ferrous label when we change the text property it should do our translations but it's not I wonder let's have a look We've got a text style, beautiful. We've got an animation offset. All right, that controls the animation where it should be going. Let's see if that works. And then we'll clean up all of this code. This is this is like a classic example of when you change one thing, 30 things break. There we are, that's better. So now our prices. Um, are going up here. Beautiful. Whether the prices are right is another thing altogether. You know, because the price is going to be based on the size of the pizza as well, which we're not doing. So for a start us, let's get rid of some of this background stuff now that we've got their layout kind of sorted.
So we're going to have to, when we change our sizes, we're going to have to update the price there. Wow. Okay. Oh, that's because it's storing state. So when I go down, it's not updating that. Let's quickly fix that. It's turned into a bit of a mess, hasn't it? And actually, we probably want that to go down as well. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of this for the moment. And I'm just going to ram it in here like a bad coder. No, why would I do that? Let's not do that. It's just unnecessarily bad. But we do need to update this. So you know what I need to do. I really need to add a view model behind this, I think. Because the problem is that there's there's far too much state going on in variables around the place. Now let's see if we can work out what that's flying to the wrong spot for. So our totals going up, our totals are changing. <laughs> zero equals zero, beautiful. So let's have a look at that flying pizza for a second. Let's see if we can fix that. So we're getting the place order button bounds. And what we're doing is we're animating the place order button bounds. So place order button has now changed because it's now uh, so I bet you if I get the bounds of that button let's have a look at the bounds of that button Yeah, so 2010, the width and the height. And that's because it's getting the bounds of the parent. But actually the button's working, isn't it? The button's working. It's calculating the position. That's the problem. Like that button's working, that's going. It's just picking the wrong spot, basically. So we're laying this out to chomp bounds. So our chomp bounds are wrong.
Right. Okay. Now we're animating it down, but we need it to be a little bit smaller. All right, a couple of things going on there. Who knows what, though? So we work out where it needs to fly to. We animate the pizza down. Hmm, okay, okay. Where does the, maybe it'd help if we broke this out. Um, So I think the problem here is the button. Actually, that's interesting. Um, so just thinking out loud here. Just watching that animation. I think what I want to do here is maybe put this back into grid row one. That's not going to work. <laughs> it's totally not going to work. All right. Animation. So we get the bounds of our button. Let's start there. Get the bounds of our button. We work out where the pizza needs to fly to, which is the right hand side of the button. Then we animate the pizza down. Like that. There we go. Now what we also need to do. So as that's animating and we have that, that also needs to squish down a little bit. Because that text, technically speaking, we probably should add a bit of styling to it as well. That's cool. Yeah, see, I actually, I don't think these want to be on a stack layout because if they're in a stack layout, when the width of the text changes is gonna push that across. I think it's actually a grid with a couple of cells. So in other words, it's basically like this. This here is probably something like that. So let's see if we can get that looking nice.
All right, so. We'll add in a couple of column definitions. That's probably going to do the same thing as well. So then we'll have and this will be horizontally centered. And it's going to have a label and it's going to have an animated label. going to be in grid column one. And we're going to throw a big old exception. All right, let's try that again. Uh, sometimes things don't work. Oh. I don't know what that file was about. Anyway, so I think that should be in the right positions. It needs to have a default value. Let's add a little bit of style to this thing. So we'll have our button. Button textile, it's gonna have it's gonna be the same as the background color actually. Alright, and let's see how these look. Okay, that's about right. And then we'll set the style on that one as well. So I think what they're doing in the layout is they're basically setting the opacity on that one to be a little bit lower. And we'll set the style on this one to be like that. All right. Let's have a look at what that gives us. Okay, so we don't have a value there. Oh. 
Okay, that style didn't work. Why didn't that style work? Because it probably uses a different property. It uses a textile property. There we are. There we are. That probably looks a little bit better. That's expensive pieces. I think the idea here with this is that when you change, um, when you change the quantity, it updates here to show you what it would be. And then you place it. So it's always based on the size. So when I change the size, it should also update that to be two times the price, I think. All right. And that tells me that uh, it's going to be a lot easier to do all this stuff with a view model sitting behind it because otherwise I've got like little bits of code running everywhere. But I'm not going to be able to have, I'm not going to get time to do that at the moment because I have to... Uh, Head off. Just gonna adjust that opacity down a bit. All right, so let's see where we're at. And I'll make a couple more changes to this as we go through. Um, Let's just write ourselves a list of what we need to do. Okay, so I think our pizza rule is okay. Okay, so the very first thing I think we need is we need to create a, create a view model. So as we're not driving everything just through code, instead we can do it through property changes. So a creative view model will have um, things like the, the, the size and the quantity inside of there, which will drive our animations. Uh, it also means we'll get some default values, right? Because at the moment, we don't have anything, we've got place order, but it doesn't actually get a value until we do that. Okay, so let's uh, let's change that. Um, so that's gonna drive animation when either the size or the quantity changes. Okay, um, fix the size label. When the peach is resizing, that should be able to be achieved by doing a view model as well, pretty easy. Uh, a couple other things we need to do, we need to add the rating at the top. So by that, what, I'm, what I mean is up here, we've got a star rating, um, that star rating. We'll put that up there. We'll probably use like, um, probably use like something like Font Awesome to do that. All 
I think we should implement the back button. I think the idea here is that when somebody goes back here, they go back to before this. So I'll implement the back button as well. Um, I think that's most of it. I think that's most of it. The text on the pizza size. Yeah. Um, so I agree. That's what I have there. I've got fix size label update text when the pizza's resizing. And again, that's something that should just be driven out of the view model, right? Which is the advantage of the view model. You don't have to have all these things around. Instead, we can just bind all this stuff. That'd be much nicer. So what did we learn? String format still sucks. <laughs> nah, uh, we learned that um, it's probably good to put a view model in first. View model first, maybe. But look, I think it's um, it's at least halfway there. Probably more. Uh, at the start of the app. Yeah, I think you're right. The labels are mixed there. Well, we can take care of that because that's just because those labels shouldn't be there when it's in this state. So let's just fix that quickly. Oops. So what we're basically saying is, what's it called? It's called this place order. In fact, you know what? Uh, did we put that all in a, we didn't, did we? Didn't put it all in a grid. No. So we'll say that is uh, is zero there. That's cool. Oops, I think I ate some squiggly brackets there somewhere. There we go. All right. Uh, I think that should take care of it. Now, I'm going to try and think of a way of making this code nicer for setting up all these view transitions, because this, this is pretty cool, right? Like the fact that we've got view transitions. Um, but it's a lot of code to set it up. So I need to think about that a little bit more. All right. So I think that will have taken, uh, taken care of that text appearing when it shouldn't. Let's, let's try. That needs to have a default value, but if we bind that, it should be okay. Um, 
But yeah, the question was, yeah, so that doesn't, that doesn't, it displays correctly now. Add to cart and then place order. But we still got the problem with this text. Cool. So look, we're almost there. I think some tidying up and a view model um, is going to do wonders for for this code. But for now, I think I'm going to have to. Um, I think we're going to have to uh, call it quits. Let's see if there's anyone else uh, streaming. Can't see anyone. Anyone uh, know anyone who's streaming? There's my monkey. He has a VR headset behind him. So, uh, up there. That's a uh, Windows Mixed Reality headset. Today we're gonna call Hey, ProWeb7. Oh, Thanks for the follow. Thank you so much. Thank you for the follow. All right, Code Show. Who's Code Show? Why don't we, um, there are, there's a suggestion from, from Rob, Code Show. So let me um, just come back over here and You have no idea? <laughs> really? <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me roll some some end credits here just to say thanks for uh, thanks for for joining and uh, thanks to those people who followed. Um, I think. I'm four people away. Do you know I'm four people away from a thousand followers? That's pretty exciting. But um, thanks for the cheers, Dan and uh, Lachlan, and uh, for the people who followed. And uh, thanks for hanging out. We'll get um, one of these. Now, Wednesday nights, uh, I'm actually sort of streaming out the um, uh, building the weekly Xamarin app. So a real app, which doesn't have any of this ridiculous animation in it. Um, so <laughs> you might want to check that out as well. But uh, for now, I'm gonna I'm gonna what time Wednesday night? So it's 10 uh, 10 p.m. Well, this is what I'm saying: 10 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. I think you're a, you're an Aussie, aren't you? Um, yeah. So uh, 10 p.m. Now, what's Code Show do? I'm gonna take a pun on this uh, from Rob. Yeah, I was up to one this morning. I gotta get better sleep. All right, let's go and visit um, Code Show. See who that is. <laughs> and uh, take care, everyone. Um, get sleep. And um, yeah, be cool. All right, stay safe, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Oh, wait on, wait on. We're gonna raid. So uh, say hi to Kosho. Here we go.